section 304 Vaisampayana said, when that foremost of Brahmanas had gone away on some other errand, the maiden began to ponder over the virtue of those mantras, and she said to herself, of what nature are those mantras that have been bestowed on me by that high-souled one, I shall without delay test their power. And as she was thinking in this way, she suddenly perceived indications of the approach of her season. And her season having arrived while she was yet unmarried, she blushed in shame. And it came to pass that she was seated in her chamber on a rich bed. She beheld the solar orb rising in the haste. And both the mind and the eyes of that maiden of excellent waist became riveted fast upon the solar orb. And she gazed and gazed on that orb without being satiated with the beauty of the morning sun. And she suddenly became gifted with celestial sight. And then she beheld that god of divine from a corporate in male and adorned with earrings. And at sight of the god, O Lord of men, she became curious as to the potency of the mantras. And thereupon that maiden resolved to invoke him. And having recourse to pranayama, she invoked the, man, the maker of day, and thus invoked by her, O king, the maker of day, speedily presented himself, and he was of a yellowish hue like honey, and was possessed of mighty arms, and his neck was marked with lines like those of a conch shell, and furnished with armlets and decked with a diadem. He came smiling and illumining all the directions, and it was by yoga power that he divided himself in twine one of which continued to give heat, and the other appeared before Kunti, and he had dressed Kunti in words that were exceedingly sweet, saying, O gentle maiden, overpowered by the mantras, I come either obedient to thee, subject as I am to thy power, what shall I do, O queen? Tell me, for I shall do whatever thou mayst command. Hearing these words of the deity, Kunti said, O worshipful one, go thou back to the place thou hast come from. I invoke thee from curiosity alone. Pardon me, O worshipful one. Surya then said, O damsel of slender waist, I will even as thou hast said, return to the place I have come from. Having called a celestial, it is not however proper to send him away in vain. Thy intention, O blessed one, it is to have from Surya her son, furnished with a coat of mail and earrings, and one point of prowess would be beyond compare in this world. Do thou, therefore, O damsel of elephant time gate, surrender thy person to me. Thou shalt then have, O lady, a son after thy wish. O gentle girl, O thou of sweet smiles, I will go back after having known thee. If you do not gratify me today by obeying my word, I shall in anger curse thee, thy father and that Brahmana also. For thy fault I will surely consume them all, and I shall inflict condign punishment on that foolish father of thine, that knoweth not this transgression of thine, and on that Brahmana who hath bestowed the mantras on thee without knowing thy disposition and character. Yonder are all the celestials in heaven with Purandara at their head, who are looking at me with derisive smiles, at my being deceived by thee. O lady, look at those celestials, for thou art no possessor of celestial sight. Before this I have endured thee with celestial vision, in consequence of which thou couldst see me. My Sampayana continued. Thereupon the princess beheld the celestial standing in the firmament, each in his proper sphere, even as she saw before her that highly resplendent deity, furnished with rays, this is Surya himself, and beholding them all, the girl became frightened, and her face was suffused with blushness of shame. And then she addressed her Surya, saying, O Lord of rays, go thou back to thy own region. On account of my maidenhood, this outrage of thine is fraught with foe to me. It is only one's father, mother, and other superiors that are capable of giving away their daughter's body. Virtue I shall never sacrifice, seeing that in this world the keeping of other persons inviolate is deemed as the highest duty of the woman. 
and is held in high regard. O thou possessed of wealth, of splendor, it is only to test the power of my mantras that I have, from mere childishness, summoned thee, considering that this hath been done by a girl of <coughs> tender years. It behoveth thee, O Lord, to forgive her. Then Surya said, It is because I consider thee a girl. O Kunti, I am speaking to thee so mildly, to one that is not so, I would not concede this. Do thou, O Kunti, surrender thyself. Thou shalt surely attain happiness thereby. Since, O timid maiden, thou hast invoked me with mantras, it is not proper for me to go away without any purpose being attained. For if I do so, I shall then, O thou of faultless limbs, be the object of laughter in the world. And O beauteous damsel, a byword with all the celestials, do thou therefore yield to me. By that thou shalt obtain a son even like myself, and thou shalt also be much prized in all the world. Thus ended the section 304 in the Kundala Harana Parva of the Vana Parva.